In the early 1870s, the former mayor of St. Paul, John Stoughton Prince, gathered a group of leading citizens of this burgeoning metropolis, 17, as the archive says, 17 gentlemen who were the movers and shakers of St. Paul. Among those gentlemen was a man named Philip F. Philip Francis McQuillan, who was a wholesale grocer in St. Paul. It was Mr. Prince's idea that they should get together and bring the Visitation Sisters here from St. Louis, Missouri. These gentlemen agreed to do that, that they would put up enough money and they would petition Bishop Grace to bring the sisters. They arrived on August 12th, 1873. And those two girls were registered and joined the very first classes at visitation on the first week of September. Molly McQuillan was apparently 13 years old at the time, and she was enrolled. How long she stayed at visitation is a bit of a mystery because uh, in those days, they only kept lists of the entering students. There was no complete roster of the student body until 1886. So Molly came to school and left at some unknown date. But she established a very strong relationship with the sisters. And after she grew up, she married a man named Edward Fitzgerald, and she had, well, several children that did not survive infancy, and then a boy and a girl. That boy grew up to be the famous novelist, Francis Scott Key Fitzgerald. He was named for the author of The Star-Spangled Banner, who was a second, uh, second cousin several times removed. Molly enrolled her daughter and son, not at the beginning, but from 1908. Scott had been born in 1896 and Annabelle in 1901. And Molly enrolled both of them in that year at private schools the boy at SPA, St. Paul Academy, and the girl at Visitation Convent, where Molly herself and her two sisters, Annabelle McQuillan and Clara McQuillan, had gone to school. Scott eventually got thrown out of SPA, and they sent him off to boarding school in New Jersey. Annabelle s seems to have stayed from 1908 to 1914, Presumably, she started at about seven, probably first grade, which was the youngest anybody was accepted at Viz in those days. Um, by 1914, June, when she finished her schooling at Visitation, she probably was ready for high school. And from all the accounts, she went to a private high school in Pennsylvania. Molly herself seemed to have been a rather strange woman. All the accounts say this. Uh, she made friends with mother Cle a sister or Mother Clementine, who was head of the convent and or the school most of her religious life, a very strong leader. And Molly used to come to visit her in the parlor and has been described as kind of a wispy, nondescript lady, uh, and other accounts indicate she wasn't well-dressed or very with it societally. But she seemed to have a lot of problems, and she would pour out her soul to Mother Clementine. Oral tradition has it that she would bring her son during the years he was at SPA to read his compositions, and he would sit kicking the uh, wooden barrier that held the grating that separated the cloister while he would read his compositions and that his mother thought he had a gift for writing. 
Other accounts, which can be found on the internet, say that his mother disapproved of his writing career and didn't foster it at all. So who knows where the truth lies, but those are the possibilities. Uh, after he would do his thing with the sisters, he would be sent out to the convent garden while his mother would confide, confide her sad stories to Mother Clementine. Her husband wasn't a very good provider, and the McQuillan family were basically supporting the family either in their own home or in a home that seemed to have been financed by the McQuillans rather than by poor Edward, who wasn't too good a businessman, apparently. Um, when young F. Scott would be sent out to the garden, he was put in charge of one of the boarding stool students at the school. And that was, at least some of the time, a girl named Catherine McCabe, whose family lived in North Dakota. She graduated from visitation in 1914. She said that Scott had very little use for her and let her know this very clearly. Ironically, Catherine McCabe was the very first visitation graduate ever to get a BA. She went to St. Clara College in Cincinnati, graduated and received a BA with a major in English in 1920. She, the, she was taught by the Dominican sisters there in Cincinnati and entered the order after a few years and ended up as head of the English department at Rosary College. How ironic that this girl who was not too happy with her task of entertaining F. Scott Fitzgerald should end up being an English teacher and probably teaching the great Gatsby to generations of college students at Rosary College, one of the outstanding women's colleges in the country. This is the teen years, or up until uh, Scott is about 13. At that point, his sister is taken out of school and sent to this private school also. Annabelle, however, kept her relationship with Sister Teresa, who had apparently been her teacher. And I remember very well, as a young nun, seeing this old lady that would come and visit Sister Teresa every summer. She said it was her retreat. This was in the 1950s. I think her retreat consisted not of being in the chapel. I don't remember her ever being there, but I remember she was always with Sister Teresa chatting away, and maybe they were having spiritual direction, or maybe they were just reminiscing. Maybe they were talking about Annabelle's famous older brother. He had not uh, cottoned too much to either his mother or his sister. I think. Both of those ladies were a little too pious for Scott's taste. Um, Molly remained a fervent Catholic, and uh, to her death, as far as we understand, Annabelle certainly did. She was buried at a Catholic mass. Molly and her two sisters would have attended that first convent building on Somerset. The younger of the McCullen girls probably were in the castle-like building at Robert University. Uh, Annabelle McQuillan, Scott's younger sister, would have attended the convent on Fairmount Avenue. She was there from 08 to 14 in uh, the 20th century, same time that Scott was at SPA. And the Fitzgeralds lived at 621, I think it was, 600-something Goodrich Avenue, which would have been about a block and a half from Grotto and Fairmont. Apparently, they were friends. Um, sister Mary Regina, by the way, who was the younger sister of this uh, Catherine McCabe that uh, became the Dominican English professor, uh, 
talked about the gossip around town was that Zelda was out on Summit Avenue sunbathing in the front yard and how the society was absolutely shocked to death by this. I don't know whether this was before or after the birth of the Fitzgerald girl. This little girl was born in 1921, and Scott was having a Catholic phase at that point, apparently, and came to have her baptized at visitation. We have no record of it, and I think that was just sloppy bookkeeping because it's very much in the oral history of the sisters. And Sister Margaret Mary herself, who went to glory in 1970 or so, told me that she had named the Fitzgerald girl. She said Scott arrived with the baby and said, I am so disappointed I wanted this child to be a boy so I could name him Francis Scott Fitzgerald, Jr. Sister Margaret Mary looked him in the eye and said, there's no reason you can't name this baby Francis Scott, but just spell Francis the girl's way with an E instead of an I before the S. He picked up the idea, and indeed she was baptized in the fall of 21 in the Visitation Chapel. Patricia Hampel, a graduate of Visitation in 1964, was asked to give the commencement address in 2008. She did this, and basically the theme of her talk was, girls, let your imagination go. Be dreamers. Consider the many things you can do that maybe don't seem feasible, but dream and you will accomplish some of those things. Basically, that was her message. And she said, let me tell you my story. I spent many a day in what was the infirmary of the visitation. It consisted of a very hard couch in the small room of the library, attended by Sister Mary Regina, who was the librarian. We received no medicine, nothing. If we were really sick, they called our parents and told them to pick us up and take us home. But if we were just a little under the weather, maybe we'd feel better in an hour and get back to class. I lay on that couch many a day, either suffering or avoiding a test by a fake illness, whatever it was, and I dreamed. I dreamed big dreams. And I think that's where my real education came. So don't fail to be dreamers. She completed the talk and came off stage as usual for the speaker and seemed to be over. A week later, I had occasion to run into Patricia at a social event. And I said, Trish, do you know where that couch came from? Oh no, she said, I just remember that it was very hard. It didn't uh, promote malingering in the library because it wasn't very comfortable. It was more of a day bed. But she said, uh, why, where did it come from? I said, it came from the Fitzgerald home. Do you suppose that young Scott Fitzgerald lay on that couch and dreamed before you did? She was dumbfounded, and we both agreed that somehow literary genius might come through osmosis. <laughs>